Yeah, and Sinatra back on that Genji. So it does look like potentially this might be the the tried and true approach to this. And there are two different ways you can address this first point, right? You can use what we call like a slow push where you run that triple tank, triple support combination, where you basically, hey, just get some damage on and make sure that on is able to, you know, shoot people, get the get the healing grenade up and get your ultimate up for that late game push, take as much space as you can. The other aspect is more of a deep dive composition, which is look like the side of, you know, uh, WG is running with Louie and Sinatra on two dive champions. Sinatra swings over to the Widow, which I don't think will stay. I think that he's going to immediately change back to the Genji because I like Widow, but Widow buffs have not gone through yet, so I don't think she's as good. But she does change the way that you interact with the defense, and I think it's a good mix-up to use, but I don't think it's as strong just yet. I'm hoping for it, though. It's been a while since I've seen some some Widow play here and there. Uh, a lot of teams will run it just to get eyes on seeing what the, the opposing team is doing, because I imagine if we switch to the Sinatra cam right now, yeah, he is up top <sighs> right here. This is something that actually JKW jokes. does on Team Complexity as well. I always joke that it was him just dreaming he could play DPS rather than being on Reinhardt all the time, but he actually threw me a message and said, no, I do that every time on King's Row so that I can see what the, opponent, the, uh, the opposing team is running. If they do end up peeking out, I have more information than the other team, so that's why he's running that widow there sinatra does switch onto the genji instead yeah and they're going for that dive composition and it's smart the way that we're having a belly on uh, on like a, a reaper or mccree will also be fine mainly because they know hey if we dive in we could be taken advantage of in our back line by the tank threat so they do have a, an answer to that immediately at least louis is kind of solo by the statue but they do run through hotels so they're able to get that really closely but no one's checking inside the statues uh hydration gets a little bit of damage but it's forced out immediately forced by the raise and this is all about engage right now belly does go down but cynic 18 disaster so now takes down sky louis takes on hydration and this is just so great for the offense right now yeah, beautiful dodge composition working to full effect here as Louis did get back there really nice. It's a very early bail up from him. I thought he could have stayed in a little bit longer, but he does come back to re-engage and is able to take a waffle before dying himself. Miso trying to bring this back for his team, but he's the only one alive on point not long for it as Valiate finds him with those Hellfire shotguns. It's going to be a very quick first take for the side of the 1%. Or, sorry, yeah. that's uh, Weedle Geniuses in offense. <laughs> yeah, good job from Weedle Geniuses there. They don't really have a lot of ultimates for this next point, but Sinatra does have that Dragon Blade, which is going to... I I like using that Dragon Blade reactively when you're getting engaged with Pond, so you can kind of reverse the fight later. But I have a feeling Sinatra's going to try to take advantage of this very early on, try to punish them with you know with the fact that, hey, we can use this so much easier. We can take advantage of this next street phase, go for broke on this exact street phase. Yeah, not really much to work with it though. Maybe Cynic hits this Earth Shatter and then Sinatra can just sweep the floor with a Samurai Blade is usually something you want to get going, but no Sound Barrier to keep him alive. No Zarya on this team either. The Earth Shatter comes in in response to the Ana Boosted Reinhardt and they pick up three very quickly. There's four. Yeah, and this is a super clean fight right there. Now there's no answer for the side of defense entire team wipe and I don't know if they're going to be able to get there they probably will be able to get there just in time to just uh, you know defend this last push but on the side of the offense right now they do have a transcendence they will have a lot of their uh, defensive ultimates in terms of you know, Lucio and Zenyatta and they soon will have that death blossom up as well as Louis prime rate so I do expect this next fight to be going go to the side of the offense and they can use their ultimate power together. yeah I think when you're running an Ana on defense it kind of forces you to be very aggressive as they wanted to use that to get in but it has absolutely the wrong decision their valley it does take on disaster in these back Valley, it takes down a couple immediately. He is still alive, looking for more as he chases down the supports. Is he going to be able to get it? Sinatra does go and chase that down anyway. It's another full team kill. This is very one sided. Yeah, and I do like the way Valdi is playing his Reaper. He's playing it very aggressively, which adds a separate side of synergy with Sinatra. You know, when you have those two shotguns, you're doing a lot of damage to a lot of people, tripping them down to very low HP, and if Sinatra can get one kill or two kills, he's able to get those dash resets and put out a lot more damage. So I like the way they're playing so aggressively. Oh, nice grab, and does grab and free. They are going to transcend their way through this, though, as there's no Ana, all, and no Ana grenade to be able to negate that, completely living through that because of that transcend. A nice play there as Valier continues to get a ton of kills. Yeah, dude, I just like that synergy so much. That Reaper, the you know, Genji synergy is so strong, and that's exactly why Ana wasn't available to throw that nade into the Transcendence. She was getting, like, you know, pushed off by the Reaper, you know, uh, Genji combination, and I do like the way they kind of work together. They want to get that push really deep, and Waffle, you know, on the Tracer, recalls immediately, and I just don't do with this fight. This is so mixed. Luckily, they are able to uh, validate, and Hydration also able to take down another threat in the form of Sinatra, so that's two DPS dealers down immediately. Lou is just trying to, you know, hey, 
find some room, create some room, get everyone back, restock and try again. Mirko should be backing up right now. I don't agree that they're still trying to hold out here. They could get, you know, potentially uh, no, off. I like it. I actually like it a lot. There's 3v3 in here right now, and they have the healer advantage, and it's just they have the meat on the field. That was Louis had his cooldown, so now getting all that damage done by Mirko staying in there allows him to drop this sound barrier and try to close out this map. Comes a transcend as well. Yeah, and good job on that follow-up. And yeah, you know, I was definitely proof me wrong with that. The fact that it was 3v3 and they weren't really, you know, okay, facing a numbers disadvantage in particular, but hydration does bring out the Pharaoh, which I don't think they have been any immediate answers to it. They do have legit, who's I guess the only real person who has the range to do it, but I mean, Barrett has to come down to the ground eventually and immediately gets taken down by um, Vilay. But, you know, this is just a great hole for the defense overall. I think that Hydration Fair pick came out of nowhere and kind of like blindsided them a little bit. But I do agree with you. You know, they were able to contest that 3v3 immediately. And hey, I think they were just more confident the fact they could take that fight with the fact they had that double healer skill. Yeah, they almost were able to do it. But now they are set up with a couple nice ultimates, though, as Valley should be trying to get in position here to get a giant death blossom off. It's going to be interesting to see if he just rolls on the ground, which I think is the better choice now that they are running the Mercer Fury combo. Uh, there is not going to be an up top. Val Hydration takes down one immediately. And as you mentioned, no immediate answer for this combo switch. And it's been a beautiful switch for him. Disaster's in there as well with his uh, Farah, And they're just absolutely cleaning up. Yeah, they need to make that change right now. Valiate needs to say, hey, let me go back to the McCree. I'm willing to sacrifice this Death Blossom. But, you know, it's so is. tough. Yeah, it's so tough. So tough when you have that, you know, the ultimate. Up. Your mind is well. You know, I know exactly what this ultimate can do. This ultimate can win us the game. But at the same time, you know, if Farrah doesn't let you get close to them and you know can cuss a blast you out of your Death Blossom, that's not good. Barrage should be coming in on this momentarily as they do crack the shield over the top. A nice kill though from Sinatra denies hydration for everything he wanted up over the top there. Valiate is coming in with this death blossom, takes down a couple. It is now in favor of the offense as they continue to push forward. The primal rage is to keep this Winston alive, but still gonna get focused down and get knock some people about, but not getting the kills there. Waffle Tastic has come back onto this tracer though. He brought this back for his team a couple maps ago on King's Row as well. So they do get a nice ice wall too to completely negate any further push from the offense and that defensive ice wall was absolutely clutch from hydration there so the switch ups have been really wonderful from this defense going all over the place getting all sorts of different heroes going the big thing though is now that they're not running a fair valley it should be free to get wherever he wants it they do are, are going to dragon blade this as well as it comes in from sinatra He's trying to get more done in the backside. He gets two with one slicer as shiny and sky go down to the sushi blade and they are continuing to clean up this should be it Rez is available for disaster though. Can he get out here? He does get the two using that thin wall, but I mean, he res them right into every other ultimate they have saved up, and they're getting just a little staggered. Luckily, Miso's able to stay alive just a little longer with it, even buying some time, but. You know, hey, it's just there's just too much damage on the point. You res two people into like six people and immediately get cleaned up. So that ultimate did not go the way they wanted. But you know, good job stalling it out for that extra uh, extra few seconds. Yeah, defense did end up putting uh, some decent times. I just always love teams that are willing to switch compositions like mid fight and things like that. And they definitely busted out a lot of different compositions. Hydration especially has shown himself to be extra versatile throughout the day as he's played a lot of different heroes. The the fair play will always have a special play in my heart, but I also thought his switch on a Mather did prevent a nice push at the end. So they do end up uh, finishing out the map, but not a ton of time. Their time bank 122 remaining. Yeah, so, you know, this is, I, I don't know, I feel like this 122 is just enough to, you know, to kind of clinch it. I don't, I think that that's enough time on the clock that they can be comfortable with where they are in terms of the composition that they run. And, you know, hey, Sinatra, once again, you know, running that Genji and Hydration, switching onto that Genji as well. So this is a, this is an interesting approach. I think they're, I think teams are slowly, I feel like if they can't execute a triple triple properly, they don't feel super confident in it. I think they like going back to some of the other options. I think they, they realize, hey, we're up against several DPS dealers and a lot of high damage. We might need a good answer to that, in which case, you know, triple tank might not be the best solution in that case. If you feel you can't really, you know, deal with the Reaper being, you know, speed boosted through your front line attacking the back line heroes, in which case, hey, why not just switch back to your 2 2 2? Well, this is a weird looking offense by all rights if they do stick onto it, because where is your initiation coming from? You can't slow push, you have no Reinhardt. You're not going to jump in because you have no Winston. Yeah, Shiny does switch, which I think is the right choice, but now you're running a single support. So maybe Sky switches off of the Hanzo after they get the Sonic Arrow in or something like that, but 
but the composition now is just flipping all over the place as Waffle switches to a Tracer 2. I don't know what's going on for this offense, but we're going to watch Shiny on the Winston anyway. I think they might be trying to blind pick into that triple triple tank, knowing that hey, we, I think we can beat their tank uh, tank line if we go into the back line. Immediately is, with this is a lot to put on disaster shoulders here to single support as a yeah Zenyatta. There comes Sky Sky to switch to Lucio. That makes a ton more sense. Yes, it's all about the diecoms. This is all about whether or not you can follow up with this Winston. The Winston does get into the back line and you know. It's taken out a little early, but I think he did enough damage for hydration and Waffle Tastic to clean up a little more of the fight. Disaster does take down Belly, so that's a lot of DPS initially down. Sinatra is still up though on that Genji, but he's super low right now. They can take him down. I think this is an easy first capture, but I mean, Miracle is Maybe. still stalling up point. Hydration is alive. He does get taken down by Louis, but Louis does get discorded and likely deleted post uh, haste. So, yeah, they, they definitely do end up taking that first point pretty easily. As you mentioned, the dive-in from Shiny was not necessarily the best and most well-coordinated, but the DPS were able to clean up after the fact. So if you are going to lose your Winston on the dive-in like that, at least get a couple kills in trade, which is what they did pull off. Yeah, and this is good on Louie on the other side. Now has that, you know, that whole hog getting ready to push people back, you know, through the street phase, make sure that, hey, in case anyone wants to dive in, we have the option to push them away from the rest of the team or the rest of the team away from the, the hydration now has that Dragon Blade, which will be the big thing to look for. I think Disaster is in good place because there's no Ana composition whatsoever, so they can potentially take advantage of that. But Louis just pushing everyone bad that yeah, they just coming out. They just walked in on him. It wasn't even anything really uh, you know, fancy from the defense. They just literally walked in to take a fight, but now the fight is devolving into a place that they don't want it to be as Waffle is just running wild up front, just getting everyone being discorded and cleaned up by Waffle as he adds another couple kills. They don't need to really even use ultimates. Another discord target there as Reaper is I don't know where he's going going to the grave is where he's at uh, as shiny cleans him up too So it's been really nice play overall from disaster I love that every single target that they're calling out has been discorded and then melted and it seems like the target selection has been one of their stronger suits yeah, now they're going to be able to punish them on this specific point. They do have enough ultimates to take advantage of it. They have to watch out for Vele and, you know, Sinatra right now with the offensive ultimate background. That Dragon Blade gets unsheathed, and he's going after Sky. Sky does pop that sound barrier, but of course gets hit by the first shatter in the background. So that's a lot of damage that's going down. And Transcend is able to keep them all alive, and there's no and a bio grenade, but Pulse Shiny bomb. does get the kill. And Pulse, Pulse Bomb and Cleave. Right through. Pulse Bomb and Cleave came out. Hydration's still alive, too, so they do end up winning that fight just based on the follow-up. So early on, it was nice, but you mentioned it. Sky with a clutch sound barrier that would have gone so much worse had he not hit it did pay his life for it as he was on the ground but then it also took uh sinatra several more swipes to get through him and not able to take another target down with him so that sound barrier was beautiful from sky there we don't give lucio's enough credit but really nice there hydration is gonna have his dragon blade up and disaster has transcendence as well they do come in with the death blossom but a lot of that reflected back onto valiate as miso is able to clean him up at the end now because of that waffle tastic still alive and they do switch out of the tracer of their own as that's sinatra Natra, Louis, and Cynic combined for three. That should be the end of this bridge. Yeah, that was interesting the way that it was divided. I think that there was a little bit of miscommunication on the side of the offense, basically saying like combination of, hey, I think you should back up right now versus, you know, other members saying, hey, let's dive in, let's dive in, let's get into the back line because it looked very clean when Waffle Tastic and two supports were able to cut back some of the, you know, the Death Blossom damage, but, you know, they just had Shiny in all alone. He dies in the Genshin Sen, you know, killing them as they go along, but, you know, Louis just unstoppable right now, taking down two people on his own, two big threats. Waffle Tastic is able to trade on Sinet, on Sinatra, so they don't have to worry about that. Waffle Tastic is able to trade onto Cynic, but this Tracer is somehow still alive and putting out damage. Meaning the defense has to back up, regroup for Louie, you know, going for another big hook, and that's all. One hook is all he needs to change his fight. Yeah, well, Louie just completely shut down Hydration there, just completely negated the Dragon Blade. It's one of the great things that Hook can do is completely shut down Halt, but this is not over here. Pulse Bomb gonna come in. Waffle is in there. He gets stunned out, but does end up getting the Pulse Bomb off eventually. Takes on one of the supports, 2v2, as they both go down, but now it is the advantage of the defense as they did get that sound barrier off but it is waffle continuing to clean up and as you mentioned somehow still alive sinatra does come out and take an end to him though as that is going to be another hold on the defense Whew. i mean <laughs> waffle came in we're trying to get the pulse bomb valiate on the, the the stealth switch to the mccree did flashbang i'm able to get it in and get a couple down but simply not enough and now they're going to be pushing into a pulse bomb and a high noon we'll see if uh valley can get any sort of high noon value as it's been tough uh, these days 
He triggers it in and tries to take down Hydration Modern. He has that one fucked up. Makes his life absolutely miserable. But on the side of the offense, you know, they're just chasing it on. They're just trying to get rid of that Tracer, trying to just make sure they can't buy enough time. Murko is still stalling the point, and this is just something. Obviously, to take that, to take this fight, take this DPS damage. You know, Sky. Soundberry for Soundberry moves Meepo, um, Mirko off of the point. So this is really positive on the side of the offense. Final rate is in the balance. They could potentially move up some more people. Hydration does take down the Jet RC, but you know, outside of defense, they're just funneling way too quickly. Hydration does enough to get his Dragon Blade out as he's getting those dash resets all the way through. Now still 200 health as that Transcendence is beautiful. Keeps him alive all throughout that. They do get the nice deflect onto the Roadhog too. Roadhog's still alive as Hydration tries to clean him up as well. He wants to get the kill mostly so he can get another dash reset. He does take him down with a dash towards the and they are now stalling out with the diva on point this seems to be in the offense's favor as it is all blue in the left side of the kill feed waffle and hydration absolutely cleaning up on their dps the stall coming out from sinatra and valkai but a little too late as the grab will come out but they do finish it out with a minute advantage in their time bank yeah and this was very clean i think on the side of the offense they were stopped like momentarily but there wasn't really anything hardcore stoppage that they could really deal with i think they had it in the bag they knew exactly what the win conditions were supposed to be and they're able to advance on there and you know i do really like the genji in this composition and this i think it's so weird not seeing Ana because, you know, I want to call it, oh, you know, the Transcendence is going to get, you know, negated by a Bionade. But the thing is, there's no Ana on the reverse side. So that Transcendence just becomes so much stronger, meaning that if you can keep, like, you know, any of your Gengis alive for that extra two seconds more during his ultimate, that can be your game change. And it's one more kill to the tally. Yeah, I mean, Hydration is back on this May, but uh, I don't know these these teams and players very, very well. I, I don't, just in all honesty. But I think his May is his worst hero. Like, he's been playing everything else so well that I, I guess they just want him to be running it on the flex of the May here. But his May defense on King's Row has been less than stellar. Played in a little different style, so maybe I just need more time to adjust to it. But I think his Genji was phenomenal there. He had a couple really nice plays. His May has been subpar on this map in particular. So they are going to run out with the hydration on the May, though. We'll see where he wants to set up. Is he going to be kind of playing more passive? Is he going to try to get these aggro walls? Teams have played around it by rotating through Hotel. But even when they rotate through Hotel, if your May's brave enough, you can put a wall up there, too, and completely stifle a push. So hydration on the May is something to watch. Yeah, and they're definitely pushing out right now. They do only have a minute 20 to retake the point. So, you know, good job on their side with side of Sinatra. You know, running that Genji and just trying to say, hey, like, look, we're fine with this May being a little bit of a problem. We're just trying not to get caught out because if we get caught out, we lose this fight almost guaranteed. And they're slow pushing on set. They're pushing back and Lulu jumps in the background and followed by a lot of support. They take down the Zenyatta in the back line, but this is not nearly enough as their back line themselves are getting taken out. Valley does make it out alive by racing forward, but Miso is just taking out so many targets. And this is just... This is don't you, this is you don't want to see this on your first push. No, Hydration did get a couple nice icicles there on the chase down too. Eliminated both supports as they tried to retreat. Icicle is very very strong. That's, there's no other way to say it. It does a lot from infinite distance. It's just really good. Yeah, they only have 30 seconds left, and Sinatra is up to 97, so they do have that win condition yeah, in the it. back of the bag. We, uh, Hydration's gonna have his Blizzard here momentarily as well, though, so next time they try to aggress on this point, that's gonna be coming down. They do pop it out. Sinatra, though, meanwhile, is on his Dragon Blade. He does have to dash into the Blizzard momentarily while he takes down one, takes down two. That is three kills on the side of the offense. A late Sound Barrier comes in as they try to bring this back. Sinatra trying to get more damage, but he's picking Sound Barrier tanks to do so. Not exactly great, but Louis does take down Hydration in turn. Sinatra with the remaining cleanup. It's gonna be point taken. But, yeah. overtime. It is overtime, and that means that one fight loss on Street Base will mean... Dude, I honestly don't really like the way Hydration put down the Blizzard. I think he should have stayed closer to his backline supports, knowing that that was the target they're mainly going. Because, yes, the Blizzard did cut off, like, you know, Genji from the rest of the team, but when you're not dealing with the Genji, the Genji, with his Dragon Blade up, potentially can slice apart your entire team, which is kind of what happened. So, I potentially would have liked to see, like, kind of see, use, him, use it defensively and protect the supports more so than just trying to cut off the Genji from the rest of the team. Well, we had McCree McCreepin' up top, but he got caught out. He was trying to go for the really sneaky Deadeye, but he did run into a Reaper up there. But hey, at least they know there's a Reaper there. Speaking of creeping in the back lines, it's shiny again, looking to end this map with a flanking Reinhardt Earthshatter. Is he going to do it? 
it again. Gets another huge regenerative stun tree, but they are all transcended out of it. That does not matter just yet as they try to get the counter earth shatter in. Graviton also coming in. He hits it with a giant fire strike in there. Can Sinatra do enough damage on his Dragon Blade to help his team bring it back? He was a sound barrier, so he's very healthy, but he's all alone in the back line as Shiny continues to clean up up front. Shiny's done enough damage for another earth shatter. Shiny winning King's Row again. Oh man, this like it's, I feel like I feel like this is an opportunity for me to redeem myself with a quotation. But this, come on, like this happened to you guys last. Like this happened again. You have to be like, watching. Maybe they're not watching the tape. Maybe they aren't watching exactly what Shiny does. But this is like. It's like Shiny can't get keep on getting away with this, you know what I'm saying? Like this is some Jesse Pinkman style. It's like he just can't keep on getting away with it. But <laughs> he does time and time again get away with this, and it's just you know like you have to check your corners. That's so vulnerable. That's happened so much like opportunity. You have to count your ultimates. You have to know, hey, the Reinhardt didn't ult yet. Like we have to watch out for that. You know where is he right now? Is he in front of us? Is he behind us? And at the same time, you know your win, you know your lose conditions. You're stuck yeah. on the cart. You have to be on the cart. So someone's gonna come to you eventually, and you just have to be able to react to it. I, I think under normal circumstances, you're just not expecting that anyway. But you are able to check it better when it is an overtime like that. I think a lot of your strategy is a bit out the window, and, and you're just kind of like you're in a different mental place of. Let's stay on the cart. Who's in front of us? Let's kill everything in front of us. They're going to try to push onto us, and you're not necessarily checking your sides or anything like that. The first one where he came from over the top is much more excusable than that one, because he just snuck around the side, not even off the top rope there. But yeah, he, he can't keep getting away with this is absolutely right. Uh, now they have 222 to take first and to reach the yellow box of victory, which is about halfway through streets phase. So that is the win condition set up right now for TIP, the 1%. Yeah, and I like the Louis, you know, Louis May. I think Louis playing is slightly more aggressive, just waiting for one person to get through. Case him out, but you know, hey, they're playing around it. They're going through the hotel. They're trying to abuse that specifically. But Louis, hey, good job. It blocks them off and separates hydration from the rest of the team. That wall is going to be up for a little bit more. Buys them slightly more time, but hydration is already on this side. This is going to be, he's going to be a pain in the ass for a lot of these players. Because he can potentially be in anywhere, and right now, yes, that charge goes in a valley. They does take down Misa, but on the side of the defense, they're just getting overrun right now. This is a super messy fight. Not just able to hit an eye shiny, but legit RC takes the hydration, meaning that Genji's not going to be able to do anything more. Wobble Tastic is able to trade out a few more damage. They need to stay. They need to get back. They need to wait for the rest of the team to catch up, not get picked off. And right now. Louis doing a great job, and this is side of the defense. That was a super messy fight, but they were able to keep their target selection exactly where they wanted it. Yeah, Louis with a great life on May. He just uh, started figuring out which targets he wanted. He was able to take down that Zarya earlier. It was the Reaper and the Kill Fee, but it was Louis who segmented him off, and then just the freeze very late on both supports, and the chase down was beautiful. Now all this Blizzard is going to be up. He's going to be a little bit patient on it. I imagine as soon as that Reinhardt shield cracks, he's going to get in there. That's exactly what happens as he does throw that Blizzard down. He is able to freeze out the tank, but the tank is getting healed up. And nice trans in response hydration trying to go crazy here only gets a couple kills before he's taken out by sky shiny is going to have his earth shatter up and we've seen what shiny can do with earth shatter so we'll see if he's able to do a beautiful wall completely negates that earth shatter as everyone on the defense still very healthy shiny going in looks for a charge does not end up getting it though it's going to be pushing them back though as the offense continues to put some time on this point shiny's very far forward trying to deny a re-entry from cynic as with what he has in mind but that is it for the defense they're gonna back out yeah i agree that they that, they do not want to get staggered right there because of the box is so close to that entrance so really they don't like to push for a lot and I think because the box is so close, they're going to specifically be checking for that big flank position. So that's not going to work on their side. They need to figure out a way to just either win this fight straight up or try to fight an engagement, fight a counter engagement before the payload can really get through that wall. It should be Big Bang Theory because they know legit used his Transcend in there earlier. So Transcend can't necessarily even save you from a Tracer Pulse Bomb anyway, but it is going to negate a lot of this. Good, they get the Pulse Bomb and the wall comes in to try to deny. Pulse Bomb does go down to the back though. They get a couple. There goes Mirko. Everyone else so hurt right now. Sinatra trying to bring this back for his team, but he's not going to be enough. He does start trying to get some slashes through. Hydration takes him out, though. A Desperation Blizzard onto the cart will grab a bunch, but not enough. There is no follow-up for it. That is the 1% taking King's Row. Yeah, I feel like you just, you can't fight that, that fight straight up. You can't just, you know, be in front of them on that street bay because there's just not a lot of room that you really have to maneuver through to defend that. I think getting one person in a flank position, running some person through that little, kind of like that little side room right there, and just getting to the flank, getting somewhere where they're not expecting, I think that's so useful because 
Right now, the offense, their main goal was, hey, let's just push it to that specific point. It's so close. It's so, like, we don't have to do that much, but, man, this is, I don't think this is going to be the one, but great earth shatter right there. No, I mean, yeah, you know, the play of the game is chosen by specific damages and algorithms without context. The play of the game, yet again, was probably shiny on his giant earth shatter flank. Like, it just absolutely won them that match. So that is a one game advantage right now for the 1%. It is going to be up to Weeble Geniuses to decide which map we go to next. It will either be Nepal or I believe Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. And uh, then that, that's the back against the wall here. A match away from going out of this tournament. Yeah, I think a lot of this is going to be more so the adjustment because I feel like the side of WG just doesn't have a great 2-2-2 two, two, two in response to the 1%. I think the 1% just runs that better. I think their Genji is just, just a little better, you know, and sometimes like that. But Aya Shiny has been the core of a lot of this. I think the fact that he's playing on a Reinhardt is able to create so much room for the enemy team. And I think that, you know, sure, that flank is like obviously the key we want to point out, but that shows just shows how smart he is as a Reinhardt. He's not thinking about, hey, I'm just going to stand in front of my team, put that shield up, deny so much damage. He's thinking about it more so. How can I use my ultimate? How can I use my high priority abilities to really capitalize on what the enemy is expecting? And you know, that's going to be in the back of their mind, like throughout the entire rest of the series, if it goes that far, is that, you know, is he in a flank position? Is he going to, you know, jump out at us and he's going to get a great earth shatter us that's going to, you know, screw up our overtime push? So that's going to be something in the back of their head. And I think that's something that we have well, to think about, at least we have to look at it. I, I think the fact that it's overtime allows it, though, like completely, because if you're running in regular time, then the offense is not just all going to be on the cart. They're, they're going to be pushing ahead and pushing forward. And if that happens while your Reinhardt's trying to get sneaky, you're essentially fighting 6v5 without one of your most important cogs of that defensive fight so the fact that they are going to be all on the cart and they're not going to be aggressing off of it into your team on defense allows you as a Reinhardt to take those chances because if that's a regular time where they're there's kind of just playing standard and no one necessarily has to be on the cart where they're just trying to win fights then moving your Reinhardt out into that position is an extremely high risk scenario so I think the fact that it was overtime allows him to make those plays but that's got to be something that teams have to start playing around and playing for um, that if it's an overtime watch out for that because you're not in being able to take the positions you generally want to be taking yeah so we're moving on to hollywood next which is you know another another hybrid map i think that a lot of teams really like the way that you know you have that set first level engage you know set point that you have to attack and take on so I think this first point is a lot more advantageous for the offense because we talked about before how there's not a lot of options to avoid that initial Maywall on King's Row because, you know, you only really can go up onto Hotel. As we saw before, Louis was easily able to put that the ice wall up and block that progress from there. But Hollywood allows you a lot more options. You can loop around the building. You can take high ground uh, and then jump down onto the site or you can just, you know, boulder your way through a server room or through the main entrance. So a lot of different entrances there. And there's actually on the opposite side, not a lot of places for the defense to kite back into. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Uh, let's see just what sides they want to do. Um, we're just waiting for both teams to be ready. This is the second map in our lower bracket here. Winner of this goes up top to, place com for, to play against Complexity, who already has a one-game advantage. That's how we run our brackets here. If you do not get eliminated and don't have to go to the lower bracket, you get a game advantage into the finals. So that will be our last set of the day once we finish this one up. Thank you all for tuning in to the Ghost of Gamers North America Weekly number 20. Yes, it's number 20. I know 20 was last week too we had some server issues we're just finishing it up this weekend we found that saturday would be a good day for it as tomorrow starts e-league and uh yeah this has been a good one so far i'd say that complexity is still the favorite to beat whoever comes out of here because they looked really good early and uh just waiting for these teams to get into hollywood here if we do have to go to a third map that will be on nepal yeah and I don't. I, I think they want to go to Nepal. I think on the side of WG, they want to go there because I think that's where they can, you know, potentially take advantage of their target selection potentially and use the fact. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed because Louis used to be the the DPS stealer on Colorado Clutch, and for some reason, I don't really see him on a lot of DPS stealers. I think he's operating on the flank, and that could be a preference thing. But he was so good on his tracer and so good on Genji. So it's I don't know. It's like a little. I'm a little miffed, obviously, but, you know, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes of that team. I don't know whether it's a preference thing, whether, you know, Louis himself is saying, hey, I like to be played flight position. I like, you know, filling this specific role. So definitely exciting something to see. Hollywood, a lot of different options. And, you know, the street days, I think, is the best. I love analyzing the street phase because of how many different levels there are and how actively teams will use, you know, kind of elevator uh, tech to see, like, you know, how fast can we get up here and kind of have that calculation in mind, as well as all the different options you can really use and abuse. 
Yep, um, so we are saying casters are ready. It does appear that WG is ready, the Weedle geniuses. It's a Pokemon reference, so if I'm saying it wrong, then whatever. That's just kind of how I am. I don't understand the, the Pokemons. We Weedle? Yeah. Weeble? Weeble? It's Weeble, yeah. It evolves into Kakuna, and then Kakuna evolves into Beedrill. It's like a... See, that, that, that's why, like, that when I'm when I'm trying to find co-casters, I have to find someone who knows about Pokemon, because, like, I, that you have to pick me up in my where my knowledge falls off. And it definitely oh, falls man. off when it comes to Pokemon. It's so weird. I... I think that I I know I don't think you knew this about me when you made that comment, but I used to do like slight analysis for Pokemon VGC. <laughs> so this is why this is why for me it's like oh that's super cool. I know some Pokemon and you know, I know how this works, but yeah, let's look into Hollywood. Overtalk okay. is over unfortunately, but hey, I definitely want to see how they roll with this. Triple tank, triple support is another viable option, but as we've seen, you know, they have been running more with a two two two, and oddly enough, this might be the first time we see Ana in this series. Well, it does look like both teams are up onto the Ana hype here right now, and it does look like it is going to be very tank-heavy on both sides. Although, I, I would imagine neither side will run a true 3-3-3, uh, as they, they have uh, players who have shown nothing but DPS so far in Hydration and Valiate. And right now, Valiate is on that defensive Reaper. I imagine Hydration comes up on, well, I don't know. Let's take her bets. Hanzo? Hanzo. I'm saying Hanzo. I like Hanzo. There it is. I want, I want, Hydration keeps on playing these characters that I feel like, he plays everything and like, I, I feel like he doesn't, he wants to use it situ situationally, right? He wants to use the Hanzo where he wants to get vision, potentially wants to pick out targets. And I think that's super strong. Sometimes he runs that man defense to get that initial stall down. So a lot of different options, a lot of different looks. I really want to see him bring out the fair. I think the fair is so underrated right now. A lot of teams don't really think, I, I think fair is actually a soft counter to that triple triple because the concussive blast can put a lot of, you know, tanks out of position as well as being able to rain down onto the back line. But, you know, if he wants to roll with Hanzo right now, I don't think he's practiced a lot of a lot of fair because I don't think that a lot of teams have started thinking about switching over to that meta. All right, we'll see what they want to do rolling out here. For the moment, Waffle is on this Widow, which is a very late pick, but yeah, that is going to be switched. We're going to keep eyes on Hydration here as his Hanzo comes out. Hydration and Waffle are going to try to combine for some kills early. Sonic Arrow getting eyes on the team, and then Waffle will have nice information about where to blind throw his hooks as Hydration comes over to the side trying to just get some damage done early. Yeah, and they're slowly rolling to the side. This is a slow push kind of look. Luckily, the Reaper in the back on Belly is trying to watch that specific alley in the back on he is starting to take up a higher look on red stairs trying to jump up and being able to fuse that flank but that pull is so devastating pull cynic out of position of course he doesn't go down which is uh, the most beneficial but hey the offense right now is able to roll in i think they're totally comfortable with proceeding in the rest of the thing he's got great engage very soon though yeah, I mean, that pull is not ideal, it's not the target you want, but it did end up letting everyone just chunk down his shield, and that was kind of the signal to go right after that. Here comes a Dragon Blade out of Sinatra, though, as he tries to bring it back for his team, takes out Hydration, takes out Disaster, too, so that is two kills onto this Genji. Can he bring it back? He is very healthy, he's gonna chase out Sky, and Sinatra could single-handedly be bringing back this defense. Yeah, yeah Miso is so far forward, just not in position. Yeah, and this is kind of risky. If they get staggered right here, this is not a good look for them. But look, they do get that Earth Shatter into that Graviton Surge. They kind of baited them out of their, their defense. And that State of Dragon rolls through to clean up anyone who potentially could have run through. But they're able to get that first tick safely. And I cannot imagine the defense is going to be able to. Oh, well, that that hook actually changes the situation a little bit more. Taking out Waffle Tastic means they don't have to worry about the hook that stops them from getting to that position. But just not enough time to adjust and they capture the first point. Louie does go for this sneaky Roadhog behind the corner though and is able to take out Sky as he rolls in. Now in a battle with Zarya in the corner makes another hook hit as he has got Miso in his sights. Miso just dancing around somehow still alive is able to back out as Hydration comes in to try to save him and Hydration now taking the fight to these teams who are trying to beat up his Zarya. Yeah, so right now, I think, I do like how they're taking advantage of the high ground right now. They do have slightly more advantage, and they're using the fact that the elevators on this side are relatively slow, and they can't really get into touch. But Waffle Tastic is slowly coming up. I don't think anyone notices this. This is going to be a big hook that could hit. Valiate does come down to the back line, drops his Death Blossom, and they take out Hydration, does Sinatra, so this is looking very, very good right now for the defense as Louis adds in another couple kills of his own. And you mentioned he usually plays DPS. Well, you know, Roadhog's pretty much DPS. Takes a third kill right there. 
Yeah, this is just getting this is getting a little messy. They weren't able. Luckily, the side of defense was able to sustain and you know, occupy a really good position. Ville eight right now in that corner, just waiting for people to run right by him. Hopefully, no one checks that specific spot right there. But they do have quite a few ultimates to use in terms of being able to negate a lot of defensive threats. They do have a lot of great work full hogs who can use their advantage. And then Nana Boost goes in into that graviton search, cleaning out some people. But that whole hog able to push off. That Mana Boost and Reinhardt, the run, Mana Boost Reinhardt, not able to get a lot of left clicks in and baits it out just long enough for that Mana Boost to wear off. Yeah, meanwhile, Sinatra did get the Ana Boost as well, and he goes in there like Shiny with a very ambitious Earth Shatter here. He's all alone, unable to get any sort of cleanup, so a bit of a waste there. Hydration is going to come up in a Dragon Blade of his own, takes down one, takes down two with the help of Waffle Task as Miso does chime in, and they add three kills very late in what has been a really back and forth and brawly fight, but they saw a window there where they'd gotten some kills and spawns were going to be very late coming up, so they take advantage of that and use it to push this cart all the way through the bend in the streets phase, which is going to allow them to ignore high ground a little bit if they want to rotate around if they end up getting stopped in this next fight. Yeah, the defense right now is just in the middle of the offense, so potentially they can get pincered on. And Waffle Tastic gets a great hope from Louis, forcing Louis to turn around, and Louis ends up going down. So this is just how disoriented it was. The side of the offense was able to get on two separate sides, force people to kind of, they didn't really have a shield that they could initially cut off. They didn't really have any options to defend any people safely, so. Louie gets pulled out of position, all of a sudden that entire like small clump in the middle gets taken apart. Miso's been playing a great Zarya today and continues to do so, gets 100% here. They are a little bit too far forward, that allied shield is down, so Sinatra's gonna take down Waffle Tastic. Hydration takes down Louie, both teams hogless at the moment as Hydration continues to get kills in the back line, but Miso just pushing forward. They might go for a Graviton here, but choosing to save it. Is a Graviton there, even if you win that fight, your card is still a mile behind you, so just saving it for a better opportunity is smart right there. Um, it is going to be a giant ultimate battle momentarily as everyone has it up. Valde's going to be going topside, trying to go off the top rope with this Death Blossom, but it's taking him a while to get in position here. They are giving up a lot of ground on this cart. I honestly, I think that's fine. That great Nano boost on the meantime on Valde with that, oh, just boosting that Death Blossom through everyone. That's a lot of damage that can initially be done. And they are able to clean it up, but luckily on the side of the offense, they didn't burn a lot of ultimates. They kind of just got caught off guard, so they weren't, didn't have enough timing to do it. But on the side of defense, I'm thinking right now, well, who has ultimates on their side? And you got to think, well, probably everyone. So the win condition here, don't group up for Miso. If Miso gets a Graviton Surge and catches more than three people, I think you lose this fight. Yeah, and uh, like Gravitons are not hard to just kind of know that are coming in lately because they are generally just walking straight forward into it. Everyone hitting everything right now, so clumped up. The Graviton does come out, grabs four, but there's been no follow-up there as Shiny does get slept here late as well, but they are still getting the kills in. It has been rel relatively bloodless as Miso does come in, gets a kill on his cynical. Sinatra a little too far forward as he gets hooked and deleted by Waffle Tastic. And right now, Hydration still looking to move forward in great position right now. They do catch out Louie on the left hand side that eliminates a lot of the threats the the genji should be able to operate with relative impunity now knowing that that hook is unavailable to stop him in his reign of terror he goes and he's getting a lot more kills he's almost got another dragon blade up i imagine the moment it comes up he will be busting it out he does trying to finish out this fight he's getting one there is a ana boost on the field but hydration takes out sinatra in his counter number getting a so much more damage louis comes in with the whole hog it is deflected mostly but does take down hydration a clutch whole hog keeping them in this fight the offense with a late sound barrier trying to stay in, trying to close this out, and they will. Yeah, that was a little unlucky. I think Mirko accidentally got nano boosted when I think they were aiming for Valet or someone else, someone yeah. with a little more damage than your Lucio. We have seen Lucio do a lot of damage, so maybe that's what they were going for, but at the same time, Lui gets taken down super early. Um, I'm not really super early, but gets taken down just as he has ult up, so unable to push them back through and unable to defend the VIP area. It... It's kind of, it, it's tough, honestly, in that situation. That Graviton Surge landed on three relatively high priority targets, right? And I do agree on the, on the side of you know, the Reinhardt jumping in to get that shield up and negate a lot of damage. Because what that does is that stops, you know, if you put that shield up, you can't get hit by the bio grenade and you can sustain yourself for alive for just a little longer. But unfortunately, they just were clumped in the back. And that's why, you know, Graviton Surge is such a great ability. It's a ranged kind of crowd control thing that you can set up anywhere as long as you have great aim. So good job on the Zarya for doing that.
Yeah, I, I was mentioning that Zarya, it's pretty obvious when you're going to get Graviton, right? It used to be a oh, lot no. used from distance, and the, I think they just were not happy with how reliable the Graviton ended up being. But now, Zarya will just Allied Shield, walk straight through your Reinhardt, and throw it on the ground. That happens about 9 times out of 10 now. So, you know it's coming, and you have to start playing around it a little better by spreading out when that happens. If you see a Zarya just walking towards you, what do you think she's going to do? It's always to throw the Graviton on the ground. So, I think teams are adjusting to that a little bit, as it has been such a clutch ultimate ability in this game now offensively they are going to run a little bit of a dive comp here as cynic is on the only tank in winston and they've got three dps in valiate sinatra and louis and those are great three dps to support your winston in the dive yeah and i like the way valiate is using his his reaper i guarantee this is what's going to happen right because typically you think about it like do I want a Reaper or do I want a McCree? And sometimes you think you want the McCree for the flashbang, but the way that Valiate plays is he specifically runs through your front line to the back line. So he's another diver using the fact that Lucio's out, the Lucio speed boost. So I think that's exactly what they're gonna do. I think they're just gonna power through, try to take the fights and force defense out of position. Yeah, I'm going to watch Louie here as he rolls in on the Tracer, generally trying to go around the backside too, but he's going to be spotted going through the backside. They know he's going to be coming, but is it going to be enough? They do end up going with that dive composition. Can Louie get the follow-up onto these people as Cynic has given his life for this dive already? And no, that is just brutal for them. They lose three early on. That dive all but negated. There goes Sinatra too. It's just Louie. He's going to have to fail out of here. Let's see if a blink up does have his blinks up to get out at the very least. So that dive, a 0% success. That kind of was very mistimed. I feel like Cynic didn't go in with any additional pressure there, and that's kind of what Winston is for. Winston's mainly just to lower the health of the backline so you can clean up with Sinatra's dashes and Louie helping out as well. So they need to be more coordinated with that backline push, but the defense is pretty smart right now. They know exactly where the threat is. They do spot Louie with that flank, so they're just trying to kite back potentially into under cafe, but the same that they're giving the defense a lot of yeah, both DPSs do come in with the dive, but Hydration gets the better part of his Dragon Blade so far. Louis does take that one in Disaster with his ball spawn, but again, completely cleaned up. The only bad part for that defense is Soundbear came down really late, perhaps unnecessary, but probably did save Waffle's life at the very least. So they should be, actually Waffle is not getting any healing because they're waiting for Disaster to get back in here. Disaster healing up on Waffle should be able to just get his Ana ult up so high. Look at that ult rate climb, already at 60%. Brutal. 52, but yeah. Hey, but hey we're rounding hey. here. <laughs> yeah, we round down. I'm to making a anyway. point. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I agree with you completely. That is a huge ultimate gap. They did very smart on there. And but Cynic goes back in the back line, luckily with Louie there as well. So he's maybe trying to worry, but Waffle Tastic, not able to do a lot more damage. It looks like the offense is one really solid push that all they needed. That Transcendence comes in to keep them all topped off, make sure there's no other damage that really can be done. But that Graviton Surge captures all the in, but only to buy a little more time. and. But Disaster does take down legit RC, which is, you know, a, it's good taking down that damage, but Louis it takes down Eye Shiny as well, so there's not a lot of tank lines available. Sky will try to be staying alive as much as he can. Hydration is still alive, which I think is good enough. I don't think he'll be able to sustain passes, though. So this should be... I don't think he's bought enough time to rest the team, but at the same time, you know, the side of the defense recognizes, hey, we did enough as we could, let's set up for the second point. Yeah, Shiny was moments away from hitting another Earth Shatter. He did charge it up through that Graviton, uh, but he is going to have that Earth Shatter up and ready again. We've seen how impactful Shiny's Earth Shatters have been here, so wouldn't even surprise me if he's somewhere hiding on a rooftop waiting to drop down. He does, he is on the rooftop, but not necessarily hiding. His entire team gets high ground here. Yeah, Louis just zipping back and forth, creating trouble in the back line, forcing people to look behind you. And that's mainly just to keep Disaster on his toes, because if Disaster can't see where the flank is coming from, he can't look forward, can't shoot his tanks, and can't stay safe to use that Nana Boost. But that Nana Boost gets used early on anyway, and they're zipping through the defense, capitalizing the fact that Louis is in the back line. They know they don't have enough DPS to deal with it, so Louis. Fortunately, the only person really in the back line can't really do much. He's just sitting around trying to not get staggered. It's a fine line to run as a tracer, too. We saw it the other day with Soon on a couple maps, but he readjusted. But if you're really in the back line and the, def and the defense knows that, or the opposing team, regardless, knows that, they're just going to take that fight 6v5 that you've given them, essentially. So if you're too far in the back line, you're not doing enough, and but you do need to be in the back line to cause that trouble. So it's a razor's edge for how to play tracer effectively in these compositions. <laughs> Yeah, Louis gets that pulse bomb. Not a lot of damage on, but luckily he is abusing the fact that they're trying to take up, not take on the high ground using that slow, slow elevator. And 
Snodger takes down Waffle Tastic, which is huge. Snodger takes down Disaster as well. So he's getting those resets in the backfield, which should be more than enough. And the side of the offense is just taking advantage of the disruption Genji is creating in the back line to take care of the front line threat. So very good on Snodger, making sure that you know, he stays alive, able to get a lot of those resets, and allowing his team to go for the cleanup. That's going to be interesting to see if the defense wants to come out here and contest. I believe that they should, and they will. Miso does have Graviton up as well, so they're going to try to get here. Maybe rotate to the right side door. Um, no, Miso's just going to come out left all by his lonesome looking for it, but they do counterplay around it. No one was there for the Graviton. He could only get a single Graviton into it. Soundberry does come off, so they definitely want to fight this right here. There goes the Graviton. Now ends up getting a ton of people, but Transcend going to negate a lot of that damage. Uh, almost all of that damage. Shiny does take down Sinatra, though, which is very nice for them. They do trade back and forth. Shiny gets an Earth Shatter down, but it's way too late as the DPS cleans him up afterwards. There is no DPS for it. All back and forth, though, as Miso continues to just bully people out with enormous health charge, or uh, energy charge, rather. They're going to hold that. I think they need to look into changing their composition. I think that running this triple DPS, single, single tank isn't really doing as much as they wanted to, mainly because they just get burst down too early and they I mean when you deal against an Ana, I think I it's kinda of, I feel weird oddly conflicting because I feel like this should work in theory, right? You should be able to jump on the uh disaster in the background, but disaster is just playing so safe, forcing them to come in and Right now, that's exactly what they're doing. Louis trying to find a way in the back line, trying to go through the the studio exit, come out in the come out next to uh, next to the Ana specifically, try to deal more damage. But there's nothing they can do right now. They don't really have a lot of great ultimates, and they're just waiting for the the dive in. And that nano boost comes out to hopefully negate a lot more of the damage. Hydration does take down legit. While Vitality does take down Mariko, and this is just a solid hole from the side of the defense. Yeah, I, I really feel like, I mean, Valley is fine on it, I, I don't know, I think if I'm making any change, but this is just my bias, of course, I had a Zarya into this composition to make the DPS ultimates that much more valuable, we've seen zero value out of these pulse bombs from Louie, and part of it is because he's only got single targets, so that's not going to be all the damage that you want from it, and, you know, if you get a Zarya in there, the Graviton is so impactful, they do add a different tank, they are still running solo tanks, Cynic does come up on the Reinhardt instead, though, so it's going to be kind of difficult for him to take high ground, maybe Sinatra will be the answer for them at least getting eyes onto the high ground uh but now without a winston it's going to be a ground push and it's getting down to it here they've only got 19 seconds left to get to this next point it's the last push their target selection is weird. they're not aiming for the background targets they can sink does get in the background but that that blossom is kind of negated by the sound bird Pulse Bomb doesn't really pick up too much, but Sinatra is able to clean up so much. So all that like, incremental damage is being done, Sinatra is capitalizing on it. He is able to force out over time, so they will be bringing it to the second point. I don't think the defense can get back there in time for it, but they're taking the sauce, the, the short spot, and they're saying, hey, that's perfectly fine. If we force overtime, maybe they're just going to set up Shiny in this corner. Maybe that's exactly what they're doing. Maybe they're saying, Shiny, you know, just don't group up with the rest of the team. Hide off somewhere and win this game the old way. Well, they have 90 seconds to finish out this map, uh, and right now it's only Hydration with his ultimate up on the defense. Offense is going to be working with a Transcendence, but other than that, pretty blank on the field. Actually, probably the biggest one about to come up is going to be Shiny with the Earth Shatter, so we'll see what he wants to do there. Keep eyes on Louie, though, as he's trying to get to the back line again. Spotted out, dodges a hook, though. Yeah, and this, this push, I really like what Louie's doing, making sure the defense can't really get comfortable. He's making sure that... that Great recall, actually. Able to sit back and recalls back in order to get full health back in the similar, similar position on the high ground. Hydration's up there. Pops is a uh, Dragon Blade, but it's right into Transcendence, so not really a lot of things he can do on the back end, but that's fine. His offense, uh, offense line is taking up more than enough damage. Cynic is able to get two. Lands a good Earth Shatter, taking down Disaster and Waffle Tacit, but no one's able to immediately capitalize off of that. Louis is just trying to stay alive, do as much damage as he can, but you know, to no avail. Mirko, Sinatra, and Villainy have now res and are trying to push back into the studio stage, but it looks like they've defended it for now. Well, last push incoming for this offense here. It's going to be off the back of a sound barrier. Perhaps Sinatra can get his Dragon Blade up during the time he will, so it's going to be sound barrier into Dragon Blade to keep their chances alive on this map. Yeah, that sound barrier comes out, gives them a lot more help to work with. So that Graviton Surge keeps them all inside and Waffle Cast. It gets just running through them. That's so much damage inside the whole hog in addition to anything else right there. And they're going to call it GG because, yeah, they just held overtime for so long, there's not enough time to make it back to the cart. And... Yeah, I mean, they got what they wanted there for the last push, or like what they had to work with the Sound Barrier and a Dragon Blade, but they did get four cleaned up while Sinatra was trying to clean up the rest of that. So those are GGs. That is the 1% moving on to the upper bracket versus complexity.
We'll do a map draft. It will be complexity with a one game advantage for coming through the upper bracket. We'll see what this play of the game is. Play of the match. Yeah, I liked how Miso played today. Miso, Miso definitely is doing very well with that Zarya. I wonder how oh, he does manage to land it. Yeah, that's exactly what they needed. That was the game winning play in a way. We're just, you know, keep them all together. You know that they use sound barriers, so I'm not sure if that was a, refl a reflex. I don't think he immediately sound. I think he heard it, but I don't know if he knew exactly where everyone was. But mm -hmm. great reactive play there for the sound barrier, because the moment Lucio hits the sound barrier, immediately the next option is to hit that speed button. So the fact he's able to catch everyone out going through that specific chokehold and keeping them together means, hey, that shield's going to wear off eventually. And great job with that hold hog condition following up for that damage. Yeah, so we're going to take a very brief break as we try to set up this lobby. It is the Grand Finals incoming Complexity versus the 1%. And you know what? I, I did have Complexity probably should win this, but if you're a team like the 1%, beating a team like Complexity does a lot for your resume. So everything, uh, every, you know, kind of playing with house money because no one necessarily expects you to beat a team to the level of Complexity. But regardless, you're going to take home some cash today and you get a shot at one of the more established teams in North America. Complexity a little bit eh, inconsistent to say the least. So we we will take a brief break as we set up that next lobby. Let everyone know, GG North America NA number 20. North America NA, that's redundant, I know. But uh, we are finishing up here. Grand Finals about to go down. We're going to take a five-minute break. That is Scribe. You can see his Twitter right there. You should check him out. And I, of course, am Hexagrams. We'll be back in about five minutes. Thanks for tuning in.